All right, here we go. Uh, yeah, welcome uh, to the GitOps one-on-one demystifying GitOps talk. Um, we will talk about uh, GitOps today, yeah, obviously, um, and we want to uh, want to see that GitOps is not just a buzzword. Um, we want to uh, make sure that people know um, it, that not, not the only requirement to be uh, working with GitOps is using Git. This is not the case, sadly, for some people. Um, and we want, for example, talk about the GitOps principles when something is really GitOpsy. Uh, we want to talk about the relation to other practices. We want to uh, go over an example workflow. And then we want to see what available tools uh, are out there already. And uh, yeah, we want to show you when GitOps is really GitOps. So let's get started. So first of all, what is GitOps? Uh, GitLab has its definition uh, of GitOps is an operational framework that takes DevOps best practices used for application development, such as version control, collaboration, compliance, and CI, CD, and applies them to infrastructure automation. So infrastructure automation in this case, for example, is also uh, deploying new, um, new resources, for example, uh, new network policies, config maps, uh, but just also regular deployments, pods, um, yeah, whatever, whatever there is, for example, in uh, Kubernetes. Um, yeah, one, on one, one hand, the advantages of Git, uh, GitOps is, for example, uh, security and stability, because you can uh, easily roll back uh, to a working state uh, with just a PR. So everything, yeah, everything is stored in a versioned um, repository, for example, in a Git repository. And this way, um, when you have a breaking change, for example, and it really, really breaks your production, you can easily um, create a, a new PR and just roll back to the state where you know that it, that it was working. Um, yeah, and um, Git, GitLab talks about collaboration because you have a centralized tool, in this case, for example, a Git. And um, this way, everyone uh, has their um, their known tool they have to use, and also in a, a central a central part of a repository, for example. Then, um, yeah, we also get more transparency because when we use a central Git repository, for example, we have the possibility to see every uh, deployment, for example, or every config map. Um, and there we come to one one uh, disadvantage, for example, when you need secrets. You have the uh, problem. Let's let's do air quotes here. Uh, you don't want to store them in uh, in Git. So you have to store them somewhere else. For example, in HashiCorp's vault or uh, or sealed secrets, whatever there is. You will you will hear, hear talks today that will talk about managing Git uh, managing uh, secrets uh, the GitOps way. Uh, and also, one challenge is um, GitOps at scale. For example, uh, there are a couple of um, known uh, issues or challenges, but there will also be talks today uh, that will talk about that challenge. So um, yeah, just quickly about me. I'm Niklas. I'm a DevOps engineer at Fondorf here in Cologne, uh, Germany. Um, we're doing uh, backpacks for children, for example, and also shoes. Uh, that's that's the uh, that's the uh, market we are in. And I'm also an open GitOps maintainer. Uh, we will talk about open GitOps uh, just in a second. Um, and yeah, we use uh, GitOps mostly for our middleware services. Mm. And we started like one and a half years ago with using it and we're really happy with it. So uh, let's go, go over to the GitOps principles. The GitOps principles are defined and managed by the CNCF's Auto GitOps project, which I'm also part of. Um, that's uh, that was founded um, by a couple of uh, companies, for example, AWS, uh, Microsoft, uh, CodeFresh, and WeWorks, uh, which uh, who also um, coined the um, the term GitOps, and uh, it's part of the application delivery special interest group in a, a CNCF. And the GitOps principle you see here, which is declarative, version immutable pulled automatically and continuously reconciled. Um, these are firstly uh, first published in October 2021. And what these are, 
I will show you on the next slide. So uh, here we have declarative. It's pretty much the easiest to understand because most of the people already use it, uh, already manage their uh, infrastructure like that um, already. Uh, a system managed by GitOps must have its desired state expressed declaratively. Mm, for example, we already know that from Kubernetes uh, resources, for example, when we have our YAML files where we define, okay, uh, we have a deployment here that consists of those parts and uh, we want to uh, use that. That's, for example, declarity, uh, declaratively uh, defined. But in this case, uh, we don't only have infrastructure as code, but all the configuration data that is needed to uh, run a system, including also the application layer, for example. Um, we doesn't generally include persistent application data, for example, database contents that's not managed, um, but we include, for example, the credentials and configuration for that database resources. And uh, yeah, and one, one, one more thing is uh, the definition should always result in the same set of resources. So we don't want to have flaky um, outputs when we have uh, those kind of inputs, it has to be result in uh, the same outputs every time. All right, so then we have a versioned and immutable. Uh, the desired state is stored in a way that enforces immutability, versioning and retains a complete version history. Okay, some people would just say, just use Git. Fine, that's, that's totally, totally possible. Um, that's, um, but that's often misunderstood. So. It's also possible to use something like a um, version S3 bucket. That's also totally fine because we have the version aspect and we also have the immutability aspect. Um, so this way, uh, these are the, the, the only requirements that are really needed uh, that we have the second principle met. And one thing, please, using the latest tags like like the latest tag on one of your container images for example is not versioned it's it's, it's not that easy to roll back to a state that uh, was working so uh please don't do this uh this is not uh not a GitOps uh kind of uh, kind of way to do because when you have a problem it's better to have a versioned um tag and then just roll back to the version before and then you're fine, uh, going fine again. All right, so uh, the third principle is pulled automatically. Software agents automatically pull the desired state declarations from the source. So the source in this case is for example, our Git repository. Um, the software agents that uh, running for example, in the Kubernetes cluster are constantly observing the desired state. So how should our cluster look like? and how it, for example, looks right now. So uh, in this uh, principle, we just look on what is the desired state and pull it from the Git repository. There might be triggers, for example, like in a traditional CI CD pipeline, which triggers uh, the cluster to look, okay, here are new changes. Please make sure that these are also um, in our cluster now. But um, in this case, just I just want to make sure that it's uh, that it's uh, understandable. We are just pulling the declarations, not like for example the code or something. We're just de uh, the declarations of our resources. And then we come to our fourth um, principle, which is continuously reconciled. Software agents continuously observe actual system state and attempt to apply the desired state. So that's what I uh, just just said. Um, we have our desired state in our cluster checks. Okay, what is uh, our um, software agent checks? Okay, what is what is the the current state of our cluster? Do it does it met our desired state? So um, this way we just bring it all together, um, and the software agent tries to uh, if, if if the software agent checks. Okay, here is something here's something wrong. Um, my actual state uh, in the cluster is something different than the desired state I see in the Git repository. Uh, I will try to apply those desired states to 
um, my uh, to the actual state. So um, this way we have uh, something um, like drift detection automatically. It's uh, this way. It's also self healing. This is this is a nice feature. And um, yeah, uh, it this normally or typically um, happens every couple of minutes. So for example. Uh, every three minutes it checks, okay, what's the desired state, what's the actual state, and this way we will uh, make sure that we always have the desired state in our cluster. All right, maybe you just think, okay, I heard those principles before somewhere, because that's totally fine. We didn't invent something totally new with GitOps. Uh, we just built on a couple of things that are already uh, available, um, but we also added so, uh, a little bit more. Uh, so, for example, the declarative principle we noted from GitHub now from GitOps, DevOps and DevSecOps, infrastructure as code and configuration as code. This is uh, something really popular uh, inside of our industry. So. Um, for example, Helm charts use it already, or when we have Terraform or something, we also have the declarative form. Um, yeah. And now the version and immutable, we also have GitOps, DevSecOps, and uh, infrastructure as code, and some a little bit of configuration as code. For example, we have the ability for um, Helm charts or customize. Uh, files to be versioned and immutable. So uh, I grade that out because some of the tools have it have the possibility to be versioned and immutable, but not. It's not the um, yeah the, the the normal um, the normal practice. And then we have pulled automatically. There there we go a little bit um, deeper. We only have GitOps and DevSecOps here. It's uh, but it's also in a close connection. Uh, to the fourth. That's why I will show you that the only um, practice is GitOps uh, with the fourth principle, because this way we have the self-healing aspect. We check, okay, what's the desired state, what's the actual state, and if it's not the same, we will try to apply it, and this way um, we bring it this all together. All right, so uh, here is one possible workflow. This is um, pretty much the workflow we use um, here at Fontoff. Uh, so let's go over it. I will make this bigger. So uh, first of all, we have a developer here. So for example, uh, I'm creating a new uh, feature. I will create a, a PR with code changes and uh, some, uh, someone on my team checks it and reviews it and uh, that's totally fine. And then we merge it, trigger our CI, uh, CI build uh, there we build a new container image, for example, in version 1.1, and uh, we then push it to the uh, image registry, and um, we store our image there. Then we have our uh, image controller in our. Though this 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 one is our uh, cluster um, with the GitOps uh, deployments inside, and we have an image controller, which checks every couple of minutes if there's something changed inside of our image registry. And now we see, okay, um, we have a new image version here, for example, one, uh, v1.1, and uh, the image controller sees, okay, there's there's 1.1, I only know about 1.0, so let's grab the, um, the manifest, update the version inside of it, and create a PR in the um, GitOps uh, red, uh, red repository, and um, then, uh, another developer, or I can also uh, review it. Uh, I check it. Okay, it's totally fine. I, that's that's what I what I pushed earlier, and uh, let's let's merge it. Then we have it uh, uh, in our main branch, for example, the deployment manifest, and our GitOps operator checks. Okay, the desired state changed, um, but I know only know about the deployment v 1.0. Uh, but I now have the desired state of 1.1. So let's make sure that we get the actual state to the desired state. Um, it will then applies it or tries to apply it to create the deployment v1.1 with the uh, pods. And if this is successfully done, 
it will then turn off the old deployment of 1.0. This is pretty much like a um, like an example workflow you can use, and uh, this is how we, for example, push new images or push new versions to production. So now we talked about like the, the theoretical uh, aspects, but there are a couple of tools already um, that do this. For example, we use Flux, um, but there's also Argo CD, which are both a CNCF graduated projects. So they are pretty much, um, pretty much often used in the industry. Um, but we also have something, uh, some new projects coming up in the incubating state, which is, for example, Captain, and also in the uh, CNCF sandbox, uh, which is PipeCD and Verve. You hear a lot of um, about those topics today in the um, in the other presentations. So, if you're interested in one of the uh, um, projects, just keep an eye open and uh, see what interests you. And there's uh, plus, plus there are more uh, coming because, for example, uh, some of them are really new and uh, they will change a lot of uh, a lot inside of the uh, industry or on the landscape. Just just keep keep your eye on the landscape. Uh, it's changing pr uh, really often, or there are coming new projects every now and then. So. I included some resources and implementations here, uh, which are available. Like I mentioned before, the five projects uh, we talked about, uh, Argo CD, Flux, Captain, Pipe CD and Verve, uh, was also their um, respective um, uh, links to the website. And I also added the Open GitOps um, project there to, uh, so you can check out the principles again. And also there uh, is some glossary uh, items when you uh, hover over the uh, principles, which I go more deeply um, what is meant with the principles. So if you're interested in it, go, uh, go over there, check it out and uh, learn more about it. So um, today I learned, hopefully, uh, that there are four principles. It's not just use Git and then your GitOps. Um, this is hopefully um, more clear now that's, uh, that we have those four principles, which are declarative, version and immutable, pulled automatically and continuous reconciled. Uh, I hope you, you learned that it's, uh, that you cannot, for example, also use an object, a version object store, which is totally fine to do um, and uh, that we pull, uh, that it meant that we pull the declarations of the files and not just the, the not not the code, for example, and uh, we have the drift detection also included uh, that we can be sure that in our cluster, uh, most often or always uh, are only uh, the state running that we uh, declared in our files. And some of the tools we have Flux, we have Argo CD, we have Captain, Pipe CD, Verve. There's a lot of stuff going it's super interesting and it's uh, since it's pretty new we will we don't know where we're going uh, with everything uh, but um, we are on a pretty good way i think and uh, we will see uh, what will come up in the next couple of uh, months and years i hope you learned something uh, i hope you uh, have a great day today and i want to say thank you for listening 